Hello, this is Michael Trey Wins RV Center here to congratulate you on your 2024 Jayco J Flight SLX 174BH travel trailer. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when you're parking. On your campsite, leave room for your awning. On your off campsite, no slide to worry about, but I want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Power is going to be just above your tire, and your water connection is going to be almost to the rear of the unit. So park accordingly, so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive and unhook your hitch, first thing we do is level our unit. Your unit does come with a power tongue jack. Night docking light should you arrive at night. Retract to lower, extend to raise. Now should you lose power under this rubber stopper, your short hand crank here will get on there and get this up and down with you without power. Speaking of power, check your battery post every now and then. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose going down the road. Once we've got our unit level, next thing we do is stabilize it. Shorter unit, so we're gonna put stabilizing jacks in the rear on this. I am gonna recommend picking up a pair of stabilizing jack pads. They're gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt and debris. But most importantly, if you're on a black top, Keep them from sinking into that black top and getting them all gummed up. You're gonna run them down on top of those jacks just until these are taut. Now remember, um, your unit's already level. All we're trying to do at this point is stabilize it. So get both of them down. That's your unit level and stable. Hook up your power and water. Over on your off camp side, just above your tire is gonna be your power. Now these have a pistol grip. What you're going to do is you're going to put it in, it lines up at say about 11 o'clock, turn it all the way to the right, and then put on your washer. That's going to lock that on, save your power. Now should you lose power, or not lose power, should you need to plug into a 110, there will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer that comes in your convenience pack. Get a long power cord there. There's power hooked up, let's hook up your water. At campsites, you're going to hook up to city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting water into fluid into your unit because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. Hook that up. One more thing to check. Your hot water heater here. Make sure that your pressure release valve is down. Otherwise, water will start coming out here. So once that's down, we can go ahead and turn that hose on. After that hose has been on for a few minutes, we're going to go inside, open up all of our water taps, get a nice steady flow of water going through them, get all the air out of the lines, water going through your showers, your sinks, then you can shut them off and you're all set for water at a campsite. Now let's say we're going to go boondocking or dry camping. I walked right past it. In that case, we're gonna fill up our fresh water tank. Back over here. No need for a water pressure regulator here. You can gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. There's an overflow valve right here or on the inside where you check the levels of your fluids, your black and gray tanks. There's also a fresh water button. Keep an eye on this when you're filling it up. Don't leave it unattended. Once you have it full, put your cap back on there. Then whenever you want to utilize that water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to city water. That is already pressurized. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit. You're all set to camp. Got power and water. Start uh, over here on the off camp side. This is going to be our low point drain for our fresh water tank. And dump in that fresh water tank. Again, your power right above your tires. Your city water connection. Our black and gray tanks, handles to dump, hot water heater, that, that will stay on here, and then you'll turn to the temperature you desire indoors. There's where you plug in your cable at the campsites. You did purchase the uh, Lippert ladder, that's inside, and you have the uh, backup camera installed. Back here you've got a 
cover for your spare tire recommend keeping that on there to add some longevity to the life of your tire keeps them from dry rotting coming back over on this side your awning recommended to stay out for shade light rain any uh hard rain or high winds bring it in just be smart about it if you've got light rain going on go ahead and do this pitch control there that'll bend down and that'll tilt your awning so a little rain water will run away from wherever your picnic table is you can do the same on the other end here's our main low point drain so we dump those when we leave the campsite the proof of your furnace a couple things on that one make sure it's never blocked two if you are running your furnace steer clear of it does get hot and they do make little bug guards you can put on those got a couple of outdoor speakers and a vent for your hood vent for your range indoors a couple of 110s out here coming up toward the front you got your big pass-through storage area they're not pass through, but big storage area with your hitch work, your backup camera. Coming up front, your propane is on a regulator. Simply lefty loosey to start that. All covers everything out here. So take a look on the inside. Coming up beside the unit, first thing I was like pointing out is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. All the way up to my left will be my awning control. On your awning, you're only going to want to run that out until you can see that brown flap, or that brown bar, and that white flap has fell to 90 degrees. Keep an eye on it when you're running it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to, otherwise it'll just flip up onto itself and start to run itself up backwards. So again, just keep an eye on it when you're running it out. Also, your door will open further than, no further than the 90 degrees, so that'll stop that from hitting your awning on this side. Down below that is our interior and our awning lights. As I bring that in, I'll shut them lights off. I'll tell you, slam locks work best when gently slammed. All right, you're prepped for a TV here. You got a back to there you can put a TV in. Um, coming back over to our corner here, I forgot to mention our control panel. Here's where you check the level of your brand new battery. Fresh, black, and gray tanks. That fresh water buttons this is the one I said you could hold down when filling up your potable water. Down here is where you turn on the water pump to utilize that potable water. Again, back here for 12 volt. Um, if you do hook a television up here and hook the cable up, make sure you turn that on so that green light is on. That's going to be your antenna. Pick up more digital channels. 110 with GFCI reset. Our sink. On the sink, I just want to mention plumbing. Maintain your plumbing. Keep an eye on it. If you travel a lot with this and are bouncing you up and down the road a lot, you know, you're bouncing a house up and down the road, things can wiggle loose. So just keep an eye on things. Self-explanatory microwave. Down here, light and fan. Above your little stick lighter cooktop. We'll turn that. Use a stick lighter. Turn in the propane outdoors. Uh, your electric fridge. I think this will be the other side here. And your controls. Are down to the bottom. There. Coming into our bathroom. Here's where you turn on your hot water heater. E1 because the hot water heater is empty. Hand open vent. Access panel for plumbing. That'll be your uh, return for your heat. I'll turn your thermostat on here. Um, this is all one touch lighting in the bunk areas and charging ports. The ladder is cover you got for your unit. Down here is your breaker box and fuses. Bunch of 15s, a 30, and a 40. 
Highly recommend having some of those with you when you go camping. Crank up the furnace. Get that on. Shut that off. You'll notice that it does take a few minutes to cycle through before that will shut off. Sound system. I right, got a remote for it. Let's turn it on here. So indoor and outdoor speakers. Or neither. AM, FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary. Nice sound system. Touch it once to mute it. Hold it in to say goodbye. Our table here. If you carefully lift the table up, you can remove it from this metal lip. Fold this down. Put your table then on these pieces here. Put your cushions on top. Use your little sleeping quarter right there. And of course, your big one below that is going to be your carbon monoxide propane detector and 110. This lighting up here is all hand touch to shut off. AC is going to be up here. Oh, medium, high, oh, opposite way. Quick dump here. You can open on the ends to blast it more towards your beds. Or open it here to blast right down the middle. I think that about covers everything on the inside. I'm looking for my smoke alarm. There that is. And you just got just privacy. This back here is just where it's pre-wired for solar. Um, keep that template on there. In case uh, you ever get this wire for solar. That's where the um, wiring is for it. The text went over, that's that. And now that about covers everything on the inside. I like to start by shutting off lights. I shut off my interior light there. Now I can see any interior light that are left on are all one touch. Come back to my control panel, turn my interior lights on and say doors and drawers. Walk through your unit, make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Got all, everything fastened down for travel. Shut up and share your lights and exit the unit. Now I need steps. Be careful bringing them in or out because of the way our door stays here. They are also adjustable. You have to watch them, we're setting these in here. They're adjustable, we're pulling on this. Move the leg to the height that you need it at. It's great for unlevel ground. Before you leave the dump station, lock and deadbolt this door. Lift and turn that handle. That's how you want that door to travel. All right, if we are out boondocking, we're going to come over here. Get underneath our freshwater tank, dump that little point drain there, empty that fresh water. Bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on home or the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. If we are at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable. Bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station. That dump station parked accordingly. Your dump's going to be right behind your the rear of the unit here. Ten foot hose comes to your convenience back. Hook that up and pull our black hole detector. Let's give you your sewage. Go inside, look to see if your black is empty. If it shows empty, come back out here, close that black, and pull our gray handle. Now while my grays are draining, I could come around and dump my low point drains over here. Now I'm done, come back over here, dump that gray or close that gray, take your sewage hose and conveniently and sanitarily store this stinky slinky right in your bumper and head on home. Again, thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this J-Flight for many years to come. Happy camping.